Everyone thinks that they're missing out, that there's some part of them that's non-existent. Some people blame their lack of parents. I'm six years old again, passing messages between parents. He left when I was like six years old. Our fathers were our models for God. If our fathers bailed, what does that tell you about God? Some blame the time period they live in. We're the middle children of history, man. We have no great war, no great depression. Others go for an easy target. When deep space exploration ramps up, it'll be the corporations that name everything. More still, blame an absence of what they think their gender should be. They're still men. Men is what we are. A lack of identity like this. It's close to being complete. Shit, man, now it's all gone. What do you feel about your life? I don't know, I wouldn't feel anything good about my life. Is that what you want to hear me say? Fine. Mixed with apathy towards others. Strangers with this kind of honesty make me go a big rubbery one. And maybe a bit of insomnia. Lose an hour, gain an hour. Could you wake up as a different person? It's a dangerous combination. Everything's a copy of a copy of a copy. The narrator for all intents and purposes is living as a husk of a man. One that doesn't even have a name. Who are you? Any of the stupid names you give each night? He leads a life where instead of creating his own emotional blueprint, the only way he can sleep is by leeching off of those around him. I became addicted. When he can no longer keep this up, and she ruined everything. All he can do is tap into his primitive side and lash out at a perceived omnipresent threat. I had become a slave to the IKEA nesting instinct. He can't even fully do this until he makes up a whole other persona. Tyler Durden. You were looking for a way to change your life. You could not do this on your own. At first, Tyler and by proxy the narrator become hateful. I am enlightened. And I used to be such a nice guy. They live to defy what others have said or built. Any historical figure. I fight Gandhi. During the initial run of Fight Club, most of the rules are designed around the concept of leveling the playing field. Only two guys to a fight. One fight at a time, fellas. No shirts, no shoes. Even when the homework assignments for Project Mayhem start, Tyler furthers the dehumanizing. The application process alone calls for self-reliance and emotional distance. The applicant then waits for three days without food, shelter, or encouragement. He may then enter and begin his training. Since all these applicants are feeling unhappy or feeling nothing from what they're exposed to, What did you want to be? Veterinarian! Veterinarian! If you're not on your way to becoming a veterinarian in six weeks, you will be dead. Tomorrow will be the most beautiful day of Raymond Castle's life. His breakfast will taste better than any meal you and I have ever tasted. They find a new way to define themselves by becoming nothing. You are the same decaying organic matter as everything else and forcefully making other people into nothing by destroying the offices or chain coffee joints that they find themselves in. <laughs> what the fuck did you guys do? Tyler stands for nothing at worst and angst at best. It looked like it was waiting to be torn down. He's simple aggression toward the opposite sex. Her lie reflected my lie. So once again, I couldn't sleep. We're a generation of men raised by women. I'm wondering if another woman is really the answer we need. Other people's mandates. If you could fight anyone, who would you fight? Fight my boss, probably. Take the rest of the day off. Come back Monday with some clean clothes. I am Jack's smirking revenge. Oh! Big business. I'm still not getting it. <laughs> or whatever the pick of the day is. And you're never really awake while slowly becoming what he fought. We now had corporate sponsorship. He saw faceless consumers, so in response he made faceless philosophers. To this day, he still does, creating in youth the rebellion against consumerism, because he never realized what his better half did. While Tyler stays on the path of general angst from his initial conception, the narrator drops his apathy for other people. Chloe looked the way Meryl Streep's skeleton would look if you made it smile and walk around a party being extra nice to everybody. Chloe's dead. When did that happen? Do you care? He feels jealous when he perceives his importance as dwindling. Have you heard about the guy that invented this thing? Do you know about Tyler Durden? In the very place where all is supposed to be level, he takes out revenge. I wanted to breathe smoke. He feels regret towards the treatment and death of Bob. Oh, oh, Bob is dead. You want to make an omelet, you gotta break some eggs. And most importantly, he has an increasing affection toward Marla. I'll be out of your way in a sec. You don't have to go. Because what I've come to realize is that I, I really like you, Marla. You do? I care about you, and I don't want anything bad to happen to you because of me. Understanding the narrator's sharp turn in ideology is what makes us realize that these men, indoctrinated through a true form of living, are not enlightened or above anyone else. His name is Robert Paulson. It isn't. My headset information you want at this juncture. 
to be able. You're a moron. They are still drones, following whatever guidelines are set before them. They may not be buying into the corporation that is Pepsi, but they are in fact buying into the next ideology that blatantly states what it wants from you. We are not our jobs. We are not how much money we have in the bank. We are not our khakis. But we are not the all singing, all dancing crap of the world either. We are individuals. We are what we make ourselves, what we allow ourselves to partake in, who we align ourselves with, who we protect. We decide what we are, and if we have the willpower, we don't have to bend for anyone, even ourselves. My eyes are open. Thank you.